ओम ज्ञान ज्ञान जनशदाया जलशूरोन्मलिताूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतलेयूतल
that teja by giving water to the root of a tree one satisfies one satisfies its branches twigs and leaves and by supplying food to the stomach one satisfies all the senses of the body similarly by engaging in the transcendental service to supreme lord one automatically satisfies all the demigods and other living entities therefore after reading bhagavad gita one should promptly come to the conclusion of bhagavad gita one should give up all other engagements and adopt the service of the supreme lord krishna personality of god if one is convinced of this philosophy of life that is faith hmm. so here अष्टान पुरुष धर्म सेवर्तंते मृत्यु संसार वर्तनी सो वन कैनॉट अचीव द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड राधर वन विल कंटिन्यू द साइकिल ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ So therefore, Prabhupada says the faithless cannot accomplish this process of devotion service. That is the purport of this verse. And how faith is created? Faith is created by association with devotees who have faith. So that association is very important. And we have discussed what is the meaning of association. So therefore, we find that. Even in the early days of the movement, those who associated with Shri Prabhupada sincerely, then they got that faith, and then they practiced seriously and they advanced so quickly because of that association. So, the definition of faith is what is the definition of? What is the Chaitanya Tamasvara? Krishna Bhakti Goyle Sarva Karma Krita Hoy. So one has that faith. That faith means the firm conviction that simply by serving Krishna, everything else is achieved. Nothing else to be done. Simply I have to practice devotional service. So there is no need to worship the devotees. There is no need to practice any of the process of karma, jnana, yoga. There is no need to go to astrologers. Nothing. Only devotional service, so that's sufficient. So thus, faith is the most important factor for progress in Krishna consciousness. And then, on the basis of faith, the devotees are divided into three categories. We are aware of that, and that is Kanishta, Kanishta, Madhyama, and Uttam. So then, in the next paragraph, Prabhupada writes about these three categories. Which I'm sure has already been discussed in the nectar of instruction, and uh, will also be discussed in the nectar of devotion. So we're not going into these details. But in the next paragraph, Prabhupada writes one important statement. <clears throat> It is only by faith that one can advance in Krishna consciousness. You saw that. It is only by faith that one can advance in Krishna consciousness. So when one has faith, then one follows. To the degree one has faith, to that degree one follows sincerely. So that is why, by faith, one advances. So when one has faith, that yes, I simply have to follow Shri Prabhupada's instructions, I have to follow the Guru's instructions, and simply as faith, then everything is revealed to one who has faith.
And therefore, Prabhupada concludes the Prabhupada by saying this faith is very important in the discharge of devotional service. Okay. So we'll go to the next section from four to ten. Krishna's Achintya Bheda Bheda relationship with the material worlds. Now, this we have to some degree covered in the seventh chapter. When we're discussing the seventh chapter, seventh verse, Matta Paratharamna, and the subsequent verses also. And then we hear Krishna explains in more details. So here, this is Aishwarya Gyan. Now Krishna is describing his Aishwarya, his relationship with the material worlds. And so by understanding this Aishwarya, we understand the greatness of Krishna, understanding the greatness of Krishna, then we can surrender more by understanding how great Krishna is. Fourth verse. Maya tadam midam sarvam jagat abhyakta murtina mastani sarva bhutani na chaham teshavastitaha. By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. Okay, read the book. Supreme Personality of God is not perceivable through the gross material senses. It is said, Atta Shri Krishna Namandi, Namapit Gaya Mindriya, Sivan Mukhoi Jeeva Do, Namiva Spurthiya. Lord Shri Krishna's name, pain, past time, and subsequent cannot be understood by material senses. Only to one who is engaged in pure devotional service under proper guidance will be revealed. In the Dham Samhita, it is stated, Rimandana Chuta Bhakti Nusha Nayana, Sandha Sadevadesh Lokiyanti. One can see the Supreme Personality of God at Govinda always within himself and outside himself if one has developed the transcendental loving attitude towards him. Thus, for people in general, he is not visible. And it is said that although he is all pervading, everywhere present, he is not conceivable by the material senses. This is indicated here by the word Abhyakta Murtina. But actually, although we cannot see him, everything is resting in him. As you discussed in the seventh chapter, the entire material of cosmic precision is only a combination of its two different energies, the superior visual energy and the nuclear material energy. Just the sunshine is spread all over the universe, the energy of the Lord is spread all over the creation, and everything is resting in that energy. Yet, one should not conclude that because he is spread all over, he has lost his personal existence. To refute such an argument, the Lord says, I am everywhere, and everything is in me. But still, I am aloof. For example, a king heads the government, which is but the manifestation of the king's energy. The different governmental departments are nothing but the energies of the king, and each department is resting in the king's power. But still, one cannot expect the king to be present in every department personally. That is a crude example. Similarly, all the manifestations that we see in everything that exists, both in this material world and the spiritual world, are resting on the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The creation takes place by the diffusion of the different energy. And as stated in Bhagavad Gita, Mr. Bhyam Idam Krishna, he is everywhere present by his personal representation, the diffusion of his different energies. Maya Tadam Idam Sarvam Jagat. So Krishna saying, I am present throughout the entire Jagat, the entire universe. How? Avyakta Murtina. So, what is Avyakta Murtina? Mm. So, what is that unmanifest form? Yes, his energies. Mm. So, through his energies, he is manifest everywhere. So, we already discussed that. So, everything in the seventh chapter, as Prabhupada is quoting here also, seventh chapter, Krishna said, fourth verse. So there he said that all the material elements in Aprakruti Rashtada. So they are my upper Aprakruti. And next verse? Okay. 
Bindi Prakriti Me Para Jeeva Bhuta Mahabaho Yehi Tadarite. So that is Para Prakriti. And the sixth verse he says that everything is basically a manifestation of this. So therefore everything throughout the universe there is manifestation of Para Prakriti or Para. So therefore he is manifest throughout the entire Jagat in his Abhyakta form and that is his different energies. Then he says Matstani Sarva Bhutani Na Chaham Tesha Vasit. I am, all beings are in me. Matstani Sarva Bhutani. Within me are all the living entities. Na Chaham Teshu Avastita. Na Chaham Teshu Avastita. But I am not in them. What does that mean? All beings are in me, but I am not in them. Directly. I'm not directly linked to them. I'm not directly connected to them. I am aloof. Though all of them are in me, all of them are dependent on me, but I am aloof from them. That is the meaning. So, as Sri Prabhupada is explaining here, so even though Krishna is present throughout the entire creation, in every atom is present. Andantarastha Paramanu Chantarastha. But we cannot see him. Why we cannot see? Okay. Correct. Why we don't have? Grahya Mindra means? Uh, so what's the problem with the material senses? Huh? Not comfortable. Compatible. Compatible. Why not compatible? Huh? Oh, my dear brother. Thoda rahasya ba. Currently, it was spiritual senses are covered with material senses. Okay. Spiritual objects cannot be perceived through the material senses. Once by process of devotion is purified, then the spiritual senses can pursue the spiritual object. Okay, fine. So basically, the problem is yes, there is material contamination. There is no prema. There is no prema. So though Krishna is present even with the atom, <clears throat> you may say shakti, but we also already discussed what. Shakti, uh, Shakti and Shakti Mana are non different. So, in any case, Krishna is present everywhere, and Krishna is uh, Shirodaksha Vishnu, Paramatma is actually present within the atom also. So, in however you see it, Krishna is present everywhere. So, if you are not able to perceive, the problem is our materially conditioned senses. Therefore, Prabhupada is quoting here, Atta Sri Krishna, now, Na Bhave Krayam. <clears throat> so then, um, so yes, Krishna is present everywhere. But still, there is a difference. Now, Prabhupada refutes one point of Maya Vadoriya. Yet one should not conclude that because he spread all over, he has lost his personal existence. So this is uh, Mayavada understanding. Mayavada understanding. So because he spread everywhere, how can he also be in one place? So, so like you, you are sitting in this room, are you present somewhere else? One plus one is one. <laughs> one plus one, 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 one minus one, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, wo alag baat hai. Wo alag baat hai. Ah, 
that is uh, okay so many universes are coming out of krishna but still krishna remains as oh, 1 minus 1 equal to but the point here is that the mayavadi say because krishna is spread everywhere therefore he cannot have personal existence in one place because what is the why they say like that what is the problem no <coughs> They think that because he is expanding his body. They think that because he is uh, manifested to different places, he got banished. Because uh, they feel it like it's material. Ah. So they impose material conceptions on the Supreme. Because I cannot do it, therefore nobody else can. Because I cannot be simultaneously in one place and everywhere, therefore nobody else can do it. <laughs> so they superimpose material conceptions on the soul. And to support their Siddhanta, they give analogy. Which analogy they give? Ah. So, so what happened to the paper? So you tear a paper into pieces and throw them, and the original paper is lost. So similarly, the Lord is spread everywhere, so then he cannot be in one place. So how do you refute that analogy? Now, how do you refute this analogy? Ah, paper. Ah, Pran. First of all, the basic thing is analogy itself is wrong because they are imposing material conception of the spiritual First of all, it's Yes, sir. Spirit like one person you're talking about. No, no, no. Dekho, spiritual concept explain karne ke liye material example. So, yahan par superimposition ki baat. Abhi wo dusra analogy. So, the example came, we had this argument. Because, sab kuch isme spiritual ka nature hi alag hai. Material ka nature hi alag hai. So, the same but nature is totally different. Okay. Okay, fine. So the problem with the analogy is what? So Shri Prabhupada explains in one lecture that for an analogy to be true, there must be as many points of similarity as possible. Then the analogy can hold true. <laughs> See, analogy means what? We are trying to explain a spiritual concept, a spiritual siddhanta with a material example. That is analogy. So therefore, here also Prabhupada says, this is a crude example. Many places Prabhupada says, crude example. Why? Because it cannot match 100%. Spiritual things and material things cannot match 100%. But at least there must be as many as possible similarities. <laughs> then it makes sense. But here, this paper is being compared to whom? The Supreme Lord? <laughs> Where is the comparison now? The comparing Supreme Lord to a piece of paper? This is ridiculous. Therefore, the analogy is invalid. It's useless. Because comparing the Supreme Lord to a paper it makes no sense. So now, the Acharyas are giving examples to show that how even an ordinary material person can be in one place and still be in other places at the same time. And that is the example given here. What is that? The king. So now you may not have king. Now you have the prime minister. So he may sit in Delhi. He may sit in Delhi and make announcement that uh, from tomorrow there's lockdown. Then what happens? Even in the cornermost part of the country, it is applied. Did the Prime Minister go there and make the announcement? Then how is he able to control even the farthest tip of the country? Hmm? 
Yes, with energies. He functions. So if an ordinary person can do that, why the Supreme not can? So he is able to function through his energies. He is not personally present. That's what Prabhupada is saying over here. The, the king hates a government which is but the manifestation of the king's energy. The different governmental departments are nothing but energies of the king. And each department is resting on the king's power, but still one cannot expect the king to be present in every department first. So the king is not present everywhere, but still is functioning through his energies. And of course, the Prabhupada gives examples of uh, Tata Billa. They're running through oh. so many branches. They were sitting in one place. Hmm? Four. Four. Okay, what? Give the mic to him. Oh, yes. <laughs> explain, explain this four. Prabhupada in one lecture nicely explains. Prabhupada said that uh, car is uh, representation of four, but mm -hmm. the car itself is not four. Yes, so the car is four, but mm -hmm. four is not the car. So on, a, on the Ford car, Ford is written. So therefore, car is Ford. How do you understand car is Ford? So it is representing him. So car is Ford, but it does not mean that Mr. Ford is sitting in every car. So all the Ford cards are like his energies, his representations, his energies. But at the same time, it does not mean that Mr. Ford is sitting in every car. That's the point. So Krishna is present everywhere through his energies, but it does not mean that Krishna is actually present everywhere. Through his energies, he's present. But still, this is a crude example. Why it is a crude example? Yes, because when it comes to Krishna, then Krishna is actually present. If Krishna wants, he can manifest from anywhere. But can a Prime Minister just manifest from anywhere? No, he can't. So that is why crude exam. So yes, Krishna is present everywhere through his energies. He's not, and he's not actually present everywhere. But if he wants, he can actually be present everywhere. So that is why it's a crude exam. So in any case, the point is that Krishna is pervading the entire universe through his various energies. But at the same time, it is not that he is actually present everywhere. So that means, so in other words, he is at the same time aloof from everything. So he can be present in the spiritual world. Goloka eva neva satya kilatma bhuta. He is in Goloka, but at the same time, he is present in all living entities. So it is now that he personally has been present everywhere. Okay. Okay, now we'll go to the next place. Nacha Matstani Bhutani Pashame Yoga Maishwaram Bhuta Bren Nacha Bhuta Sto Mamatma Bhuta Bhavana. And yet everything that is created does not rest in me. Behold my mystic opulence. Although I am the maintainer of all living entities and all them everywhere. I am not a part of this cosmic manifestation, for myself is the very source of See, the interesting part. What is the first line? Nachamachtani Bhutani. And see the previous verse, what Krishna said. Matstani Sarubhuta. Previous verse, Krishna said, Matstani Sarabhuta. And now he says, Nacha Matstani Bhuta. Hmm. Total contradiction, right? Matstani said, Nacha Matstani. 
Immediately next question is contradicting himself. What meaning is there? So one thing he says in one verse, immediately next verse is contradicting. Yes, he's there and he's not. So now Prabhupada gives a nice explanation. The Lord said that everything is resting on him, Matsani, Sarva Bhutani. This should not be misunderstood. The Lord is not directly concerned with the maintenance and sustenance of this material manifestation. Sometimes we see a picture of Atlas holding the globe on his shoulder. He seems to be very tired holding this great earthly planet. Such an Im image should not be entertained in the connection with Krishna of holding this yes created universe. He said that although everything is resting on him, he is alone. The pl planetary system are floating in space and this space is the energy of the Supreme Lord, but he is different from space. He is differently situated. Therefore, the Lord said, although they are situated on my inconceived energy, as the Supreme Personality Godhead, I am aloof from them. This is the inconceivable opulence of Lord. In the Nirukti Vedic Directionary, it is said, Ijyate Neno Durga Stuse Kariyasu. The Supreme Lord is performing inconceivably wonderful pastimes, displaying his energy. His person is full of different pertinent energy, and his determination is itself actual fact. In this way, the personality of Godhead is to be understood. We may think of doing something, but there is so many impediments, and sometimes it is not possible to do as we like. But when Krishna wants to do something, Simply by his willing, everything is performed so perfectly that one cannot imagine how it is being done. The Lord explained this fact. Although he is, he is the maintainer and sustainer of entire material manifestation, he does not touch this material manifestation. Simply by his supreme will, everything is created, everything is sustained, everything is maintained, and everything is created. There is no difference between the mind and himself, as there is a difference between ourselves, our present material mind. Because he is absolute spirit, simultaneously the Lord is present in everything, yet the common man cannot understand how he is also present personally. He is different from this material manifestation, yet everything is resting on him. This is explained here is Yogam Vishwad. Ashwaram. Ashwaram, the mystic power of the Supreme Personality of God. Yes, so here Krishna is saying, everything rests upon me, Matstani Sarabhutani, but at the same time, I'm aloof. Therefore, he is not a Matstani Bhutani. Everything rests on me, but still I'm aloof. And that's what Prabhupada is explaining. So when we say that everything is resting on Krishna, it is not that he is actually physically maintaining everything. So therefore the example of the Atlas. It is now that Krishna is uh, holding all the universes and is having a difficult time to do that. So Krishna is Simply able to create, maintain, annihilate everything simply by his will, simply by his desire, everything. So therefore, even though everything is resting on Krishna, everything is being maintained by Krishna, but still it is not that Krishna has to directly do it. That is the meaning. And therefore, Krishna is saying, Pashyame Yoga Maishwaram, this is my opulence. This is my opulence. Mystic opulence. This is Krishna's opulence. Who can do that? Therefore, Prabhupada says in the previous purport, this is a crude example. The example of the king is a crude example. Because, okay, we, 
to understand the concept, the example is given, but there's still the analogy has limitations. Because in the case of the king or the prime minister, okay, the prime minister gives some orders and throughout the country they're supposed to follow. But is that control perfect? So many times government makes some law, there are so many people who may break the law also and get away with it. Is the control perfect? No. But in the case of Krishna, he is, he is pervading everywhere through his energy. He is not personally present. He is enjoying in Golopranda. So sometimes here, uh, you know, even in the temple, this is a small area, few people. Uh, so when you, when you do management, you sometimes face any problems. Or no? Uh, in one lecture, Prophet says, "Did you ever, do you ever find a photo of Krishna very morose, uh, going to office, coming from office, and he's in so much of anxiety? How I do this management of all these universities? You find him then? He's busy enjoying his pastime." In fact, he's hardly bothered about this material world. But yet his control in this material world is 100%. Who can do this? So just like if there's a manager of a company and the manager thinks, okay, will go on vacation for one year. And for one year, absolutely, he cuts off all contacts with the company. What will happen? Huh? He will be thrown out. Either he will be thrown out, or the company will be closed. But here, Krishna is eternally on vacation. And yet everything runs perfect. Who can do this? So, he, everything is being controlled by him, maintained by him, everything is being done by him, but still he's aloof. That's what Prabhupada says. This some uh, rascal Bhagwan, he claims since it's Bhagwan, and then he gets a toothache, he has to go to the doctor, he has to go to the dentist, and yet he's claiming himself to Bhagwan. He can't even control his toothache, and he's saying Bhagwan. Now you see actual Bhagwan, you see the control. You see the control. Without even the least anxiety. He is maintaining, controlling everything perfectly. This is Krishna. Therefore, Krishna says, this is my Yogam Ishwar. This is my opulence. This is my Ishwarya. Who else can have Ishwarya like this? It is not possible. For anyone to have this sort of and everything is just happening by his will, just by his thinking. And as Prabhupada is saying, if we want to do something, 
We make so many plans and arrangements, so many things we have to do, even some small thing one has to do. But Krishna is doing all these activities effortlessly. So this is the arrangement of the Supreme. Mm -hmm. So this, when we understand that this is the opulence of the Supreme Lord, this is the greatness of the Supreme Lord, and I'm so insignificant. One may think I'm great in this world, but what is our greatness in comparison to the Lord? So can anyone do such management? You can go and at attend some <laughs> big management course and this and that. You can do all that. But can anybody do management? Any comparison? There's no comparison. There's no competition. That is why he's Bhagavan. And I am not. So understanding this is very important. So some rascal Bhagwan is there, then we have to present this philosophy. How can he be Bhagwan? This is Bhagwan. Okay. Now to explain this Siddhanta, Krishna himself gives an analogy in the next verse. Yatha kasha stito nityam vayu sarvatra gomaha Understand that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests always in the sky, all created beings rest in me. With the first paragraph. For the ordinary person, it is almost inconceivable how the huge material creation is resting. But the Lord is giving an example which may help us to understand. The sky may be the biggest manifestation we can conceive. And in that sky, the wind or air is the biggest manifestation in the cosmic world. The movement of the air influences the movements of everything. But although the wind is great, it is still situated within the sky. The wind is not beyond the sky. Similarly, all the wonderful cosmic manifestations and existing by the supreme will of God, and all of them are subordinate to that supreme will. As we generally say, not a blade of grass moves without the will of the supreme personality of Godhead. Thus, everything is moving under His will. By His will, everything is being created, everything is being maintained, and everything is being annihilated. Still, he is aloof from everything, as the sky is always aloof from the activities of the wind. Okay, so that is the sky and that is the wind. So the wind has a limitation to its movement. What is that? The sky. That means the sky is controlling the wind. Right? So in this analogy, the sky is compared to the Supreme Lord. And the wind is compared to? Yes, the material universe. So everything in the material universe is being controlled by the Supreme Lord. But at the same time, the sky is not affected by the wind. Correct? Right? So just like if there is... Uh, if the wind blows through some garbage, do we find that the sky becomes contaminated with some bad smell? Next day the sky is stinking. Does it happen? No. So the wind blows, but the sky is unaffected. So similarly, the sky is controlling the wind, but the sky is unaffected by the winds. Something so similarly, Krishna is in full control of the material universe, but at the same time, Krishna is unaffected by the material universe. He is aloof. So Krishna is in full control of the material universe, 
Control is 100% perfect. Therefore, not a blade of grass moves without the will of the spirit. But at the same time, it is not that uh, Krishna is constantly meditating how this blade of grass should move, how that blade of grass should move, how that. No, he's got everything is happening. So he is not affected by what's happening in the material universe, but his he is in full control. That is the point. So therefore, Prabhupada is quoting from. The Brihad Arina Upanishad, by the supreme order and in the supremes of the supreme personality of God, the moon, the sun, the other planets are moving. Therefore, he's quoting from the Brahma Samhita. Yachakshuresha Savita Sakala Grahanam Raja Asmas the Suramurti Rashish Teja Yasyag Naya Brahmati Sambrata Kala Chakura Gonda Yasya Agnya Yasyagya. So, so, when you talk about Agnya, order, there has to be someone to give order. So, the sun is moving according to order. Whose order? Go in the mouth. So, under his control, everything is. Still, it is moving in its prescribed orbit by the order and the supreme will of Govinda. So, from the Vedic literature, we can find evidence that this material manifestation, which appears to us to be very wonderful and great, is under the complete control of the Supreme Personality of Audience. So, now, so what, so how does the Lord control the material universe? Seventh verse. Sarva Bhutani Kaunteya Prakritam Yati Mamika Kalpakshaye Kunastani Kalpada Vistujam Yaham O son of Kunti, at the end of the millennium, all material manifestations enter into my nature and at the beginning of another millennium by my potency, I create them again. So Krishna is doing all these activities, creation, annihilation, creation, annihilation. He's doing all these activities. Um, so, and then in the next verse, so somebody may say, Oh, so much work, creation, annihilation, so much work. No? If one has to construct one building, how much effort is required? There they're constructing building in so many days. And on, on the road, they're constructing some underway. So, so many days, so many people working. So, in this verse, Krishna says, I do this creation, destruction. So, somebody may say, oh, so much work the Lord has to do in maintaining this universe. So, that's why he clarifies in the next verse. Prakritam swama vashtabhya visrujami puna punaha puta grama imam kritstam avasham prakrute vasham. The whole cosmic order is under me. Under my will, it is automatically manifested again and again, and under my will, it is annihilated at the end. Here the interesting point is what? Avasham. Prakriti, Vasha. There are two opposite words, correct? Avasham and Vasha. So, Vasha means full control and Avasham means no control. So, this is all the Achintya potencies of the Lord. So, therefore, one, unless one accepts the inconceivable potencies of the Supreme Lord, one can never understand. That is the only way these apparent contradictions can be resolved. Vasha, full control. Avasha means no control. So how does this exist? So Krishna has full control, but at the same time, there is no control in the sense that it is automatic. So when something is automatic, what does it mean? 
Hmm? No intervention needed. No intervention needed. Okay. But then someone has installed the automatic system, correct? Someone has installed the automatic system. And of course, you may say no intervention required, but what if it gets spoiled? So therefore, in the material world, everything has limitations. Even you have an automatic system, it could get spoiled. But Krishna has created an automatic system in this material world for everything to go on automatically. And Krishna doesn't have to do any maintenance. It happens perfectly. Since time immemorial, it is happening perfectly. No mistakes, no maintenance, nothing. Okay. Now, Prabhupada is explaining this. What is this? So, in the beginning of the purport, Prabhupada is explaining about creation. The Mahavishnu and all that he is saying. Now, in the second paragraph, you see somewhere in between, Prabhupada is writing. It is clearly indicated here by the word avacham that the living entities have nothing to do with this process. The state of being in their past life, in the past creation, is simply manifested again. And all this is done simply by his will. This is the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Personality. Oops. And after creating different species of life, he has no connection with them. The creation takes place to accommodate the inclinations of the various divinities, and so the Lord does not become involved. So, so the Lord has created an automatic system. What is the system? Okay, this living entity, he has this desire, give this body, this desire, this body, this desire, this body. The whole system has been set up. And Prakriti, Durga Devi, she's, she's orchestrating the whole thing. And anyways, it still just goes on. The system has been set. So, Lord doesn't have to bother about it. He doesn't interfere. But yet, he has full control. Vasham, Vashat, full control under my will it is happening. Full control is there. But yet, he is not in. Now, in management, we talk about delegation, correct? So, what is the understanding of delegation? Empowering the person to do something. And then, go to sleep. Huh? What? So there has to be accountability, there has to be regular check and balance systems to see if things are going on properly. So if the delegation is done, you give a job to someone and then you just take off and peacefully sleep, then what will happen? Person may do the job, he may not do the job, he may do it as you want, he may do it in some other fancy way. But here, as we were discussing in the seventh chapter also, Bhinna Prakriti. So Krishna has given that he has delegated the powers, power of attorney. He has delegated the power to Durga Devi to do the job in this material world. So, first class delegation. But Krishna's delegation is such, so perfect, that delegation has been done and he doesn't even have to bother about it. Can we do like that? You try it in your kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> 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 but understood the point. 
So this is Krishna's greatness. So he has delegated all the powers. That is the meaning of avasham. Automatically, delegation done, things are happening. But it's not, apparently it appears that he has gone to sleep or he is enjoying, he is on vacation. But even though he is on vacation, still full control, Vasha. This only Krishna can do. Anyone can challenge? <laughs> okay. So now somebody may say, okay, but still Krishna is saying, I'm in control, I'm doing the job. So if Krishna is doing so much of work, creation, maintenance, annihilation, okay, even though he's doing it indirectly, delegated power, but still he's doing, he's saying that doing it, Bashat. So if he's doing so much of work, then work causes bondage. So now Krishna clarifies in the next verse. All this work cannot bind me. I am ever detached from all these material activities seated as though you So Krishna is saying, Nachamam dani karmani nivadnanti. All this work cannot bind me. So if you remember, when we were discussing the third chapter and all, we discussed what is the cause of bondage? Correct. Attachment to the fruits. That is the cause of bondage. So here Krishna is saying that none of these works can bind me. Why? Asaktam te shukarmasu. Because I am detached from all this. I have no attachment to all this work. I am Udasina. Interesting. Krishna doesn't say only Udasina. He says Udasina. As if mute. So Krishna is saying, I am doing all this work but I am not attached. Asatya issue. Because cause of bondage is attachment. Attachment to the fruits, attachment to the world. That is the cause of bondage. So Krishna, I am not attached. I am Udas. Okay, read the book. Okay. One should not think in this connection that the Supreme Person of God has no engagement. In his spiritual world, he is always engaged in engagement. In the Brahma Samhita, in the Brahma Samhita, it is stated Atma Rama Sutta 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 Involved in his eternal blissful spiritual activity. But he has nothing to do with these material activities. Material activities are being carried carried on by his different potential. The Lord is always neutral in the materialistic activities of the created world. This neutrality is mentioned here with the word Udasi Navad. Although he has control over every minute detail of material activities, he is sitting as if neutral. The example can be given of a high court judge sitting on his bench. By his order, so many things are happening. Someone is being hanged, someone is put into jail, someone is awarded a huge amount of wealth, but still he is neutral. There is nothing to do with all that gain and loss. Similarly, the Lord is always neutral, although he has his hand in every sphere of activity. In the way of the Sutras, 2.1.3, it is stated, Vaishamya, he is not situated in the realities of the middle world. He is transcendental to his reality. Nor is he attached to the creation and annihilation of this middle world. 
The living entities take their different forms in various pieces of life according to their past deeds. And Lord doesn't interfere with them. Mm. Okay, so the Lord is doing all these activities, but he's Udasi. He's neutral. But Udasi Navat is as if neutral. Why? He's not just neutral. So here the example is given of the High Court judge. So, so many judgments he is passing. But it's not that if somebody is getting a big amount, does the judge become happy? It's no difference. Somebody gets amount, somebody is being hanged. So. Now, as far as Krishna is concerned, so he is Udasin. Things are happening in the material world automatically as delegated powers, everything is happening. But still, he has full control. That is why Udasin Abhat, as if neutral. If he was actually Udasin, then again, there will be chaos, no control. So he is in full control, but yet he is detached. Full control, but detached. This is what? Achinti. Can't explain this. How somebody can be fully detached and fully in control? Is it possible? One can do one of the two, right? Either one has to be fully in control, get into the things, breaks, break one's head and uh, do all that. Management. Or one can be Udasi, Jo Karnayaka. Just like in one temple, so uh, it was Janmashmi time. And uh, so, well, Janmashmi new dress has to come for the deities. So, they ordered, but the dress did not come. So, so one day before Janmashmi, the temple president went to the deities and he said, My dear Lord, look, this is your birthday, not mine. <laughs> you managed this. <laughs> it is not my problem. <laughs> so that is Udasin Baba. You do what you like. <laughs> so, so if one is Udasin, then everything will go away. So, who can be totally Udasin and at the same time in full country? This is what is inconsistent. These are two opposites. How can you reconcile two opposites at the same time? This is the greatness. This is Aishwarya of Krishna. That, this is what Krishna is explaining. Is Aishwarya. This is Aishwarya. Which ordinary person can do this? Therefore, he says, Udasi Navat, as if Udasi, not totally Udasi. So he is Udasi, but at the same time in full control. Nobody. So you see any big manager, prime minister, how much tension, how much anxiety will break their head. Awesome. Now somebody may say, oh, Krishna is Udasina. Maybe if Krishna is Udasina, maybe he doesn't have full control. Maybe control is not full. Maybe not uh, so much control. 
So therefore, in the next verse, again he clarifies. Maya Yakshena Prakriti Suyate Sacharam Charam Hetunani Nakanteya Jagat Vipari Varitate. This material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, producing all moving and non moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. Maya Yakshina Prakriti. Don't think I'm Udasin Baba. And I have no control. No, I have full control. Maya Adyakshin. I am the Adyaksha and I have full control over whatever is happening in this creation. So therefore, Prabhupada begins the purport by saying, it is clearly stated here, the Supreme Lord, although aloof from all the activities of the material world, remains the Supreme Direct. The Supreme Lord is the Supreme Will and the background of this material manifestation. But the management is being conducted by material nature. Okay. So the Supreme Lord has full control, is the supreme will, background, but management is. Okay. And then he describes how he's the father and mother. And so basically, he simply glances over material nature. And of course, we know even Mahavishnu's glance, who is just a plenary portion of the Supreme Lord, even his glance is not directly over material nature. Even that is through Shambhu. So he simply glances over material nature. Material nature is thus activated. Everything is created eventually. Because he glances over material nature, there's undoubtedly activity on the part of the Supreme Lord. But he has nothing to do with the manifestation of material world directly. This example is given in the Smriti. When there's a fragrant flower before someone, the fragrance is touched by the smelling power of the person. Yet the smelling and the flower are detached from one another. There is a similar connection between the material world and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Actually, he has nothing to do with this material, <clears throat> but he creates by his glance and ordains. Now, once again, Prabhupada gives a beautiful summary. In summary, material nature without the supremacy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot do anything. Yet, the Supreme Personality is detached from all material things. So, on one hand, material nature cannot do anything independently. Material nature is totally dependent on the will of the Supreme Lord. But at the same time, Supreme Lord is fully detached. So this is the relationship between the Lord and the material nature. And this relationship is totally inconceivable because how the Lord is aloof, but at the same time maintains full control. This is only possible by the inconceivable potencies of the Supreme Lord. So, this is a summary of the section. Ah, so, this is a summary of the whole section. So, in fourth and fifth verses, creation rests on Krishna, but he is a look and looking on departments. Everything on Krishna's order, but he is independent. When in the sky, Krishna responsible for everything, but neutral or detached, with the high court judge. Krishna glance, Krishna's glance activates matter, injects shivas, but he is aloof. The smell of the flower has to touch. Okay. And okay. Okay, any questions? So here in this 9.10, he gives the example of Maharaj Ambarish. It gives that, of course, it applies to any king. The king remains, so it is like the duties of the kingdom going on under the kings like Amrish through their ministers. In that situation, king remains aloof. But just as nothing can be done by the ministers without the king sitting on the throne, so unconscious matter can do nothing without my directorship in the form of my presence and authority. Okay, so, so king may not be personally present, but because the king is there, king has empowered the ministers to do. Therefore, they are able to do. So by this cause, even by my presence, this world is repeated. The example of the, I mean, the potter and the clay. Efficient cause, material cause. Nimitta karan, upadan karan. So potter is the efficient cause, clay is the material cause of the pot. But in the case of the material world, of course, both are actually the Supreme Lord. 
but the material cause in the case of the material universe what is the material cause yes the material cause is the pradhan the material cause can also be said to be prakriti and the nimitta karan or the efficient cause is the supreme lord mahavishnu so therefore unless just like in the case of the creation the pradhan may be there prakriti maya devi may be there but in order to activate the whole thing what is required yes the glance of mahavishnu is required yes. so mahavishnu may not do anything personally there but still unless he glances nothing begins nothing begins so therefore so therefore the example of the king so yes the ministers can do all the job but they have to be empowered by the king to do so similarly krishna may not do anything personally but his empowerment his direction his will is and of course all that happens <coughs> okay any questions yeah so in the in this case uh, it's uh, like when the gods what role do they play means uh, we see that indra is the rain god varun is the wind god so <coughs> they are given power by krishna mm. so is it that they never commit mistakes and like suppose indra wishes to is the rain god is it that he always gives the that much only rains because they are also they are not pure devotees as such situated in that place they may also have a desire to exploit or they may have a desire to enjoy and we also see in some cases like hiranyakashipu when he was ruling or when he came in, he started creating trouble in the universe then krishna had uh, to appear in the form of some like there so of course it is a first time of krishna only but he also says that whenever there is a religion i have i come and personally so how you can understand this means because now then freedom is given to jivas also they may create some nonsense in this matter but mm. still he is how he is in control okay somebody like to answer the question so somebody so we are saying that krishna is aloof from the material world but at the same time is in full control Oh, uh, so but at the same time we find that jivas do make mistakes. So uh, does he have come? Devdas make mistakes. Does he have come? Hmm. वो तो उनको प्रीवेल देते हैं वो लेकिन जब वो खुद भी प्रीवेल को यूज़ करते हैं तो फिर वो मटी ये उनको उसका नाम भी मिलता है रिजल्ट्स रिजल्ट के बेसिस में कृष्ण कंट्रोल में Yes, that's correct. So, uh, do the devdas make mistakes? Yes. <coughs> Example. Indra. Yes, Indra makes mistakes, and. Brahma. Yes, Brahma makes mistakes, man. Yes, Indra. Yes. Okay, वो तो ठीक है वो तो योग माय बोटल की तरह. Who is that? Huh? Brahma. Yes, blessings to Ira Nikeshpur. Then the Lord chastised uh, Brahma. Uh, next time, don't give such uh, funny benedictions. So, uh, so yes, they make mistakes, and then Krishna chastises them. That's what he did with Indra. That's what he did with Brahma. So then they got chastisement. That is the that is so Krishna shows his control. So free will of the jiva is always there, and the jiva makes mistakes, and that is what we will see later on. Krishna says in the sixteenth chapter. उटन is punished to send him to yes in such case that uh, some someone utilizes his free will in some way so this is what we discussed that was what happens with those people who misutilize their free will but due to that misutilization of free will whatever other persons have to suffer and whatever situations got created 
So for that, Krishna used his like Krishna was in control regarding those other people also who suffered because of that. Correct. So it was Krishna's will. Yes. So ultimately, nothing happens without the will of God. So behind everything, there is some plan. So therefore, in every pastime that we read, if you see from an absolute viewpoint, then everything is happening under the perfect supremacy of the Supreme Lord. And ultimately, every pastime is happening for the Lord's pleasure and the devotee's pleasure. But yet, as far as we are concerned, we have to learn lessons from it for our practice of devotional service. So if we don't see it from that viewpoint, then we won't learn any lessons. If you just say, okay, theek hai, sab kuch hona ta, ho gaya, theek. <laughs> Why Hirani Kishpu behaved like that? Oh, that was God's will. Why Pranalad behaved like that? Oh, that was God's will. Why Indra behaved like that? Oh, that was God's will. <laughs> then we have nothing to learn. So, therefore, then the Acharyas give commentary so that we learn. So, uh, so if you see from an absolute viewpoint, it's correct. But at the same time, the, we have to understand, yes, that there is um, now, if you see Hiranyakashpu, who's Hiranyakashpu, Jay and Vijay. So, then ultimately it was Krishna's will that they come. But at the same time, then uh, we have to learn what not to do. Not to become like Hiranyakashi. That is what we have to learn. So then, so okay, so then there was Hiranyakashi, he tortured the devatas. And then, then if you ask, okay, why the devatas were tortured because of this person? Okay, well, then, uh, you know, maybe that was, that was what they deserved at that point of time. Maybe they had to learn something at that point. And so, therefore, they had been put, they had been put into that situation. And then, of course, through that, Prahlad was glorified. So, usually you find in one pastime, so many things are accomplished in one pastime. And then Krishna orchestrates the whole thing perfectly. So, somebody misuses the free will, but, uh, and then somebody else suffers. And then, so, their suffering may be due to some wrong thing which they did in the past. So we see, uh, we have a very limited understanding of what's happening. But everything that's happening is ultimately action, reaction, action, reaction going on. So I do something bad now, in the future I get reaction. I may not understand why this is happening. Or somebody else may not understand why this is happening in their life. But ultimately it's all an action, reaction happening in this country. And Krishna knows perfectly what is happening, how to do, what to do. Just to give another example. So, it is said that Indra, so before that, Indra had uh, offended Brihaspati and then uh, also he had uh, beheaded Vishwaru. His father Twashta was, no, then Twashta performed the sacrifice and then Vritrasur was born. So, Indra had been committing many mistakes. So, then when Vritrasur was born and then Vritrasur had to be killed, then before killing Vritrasur, he consulted the sages. So, what to do? He is a great devotee. This will be a big Vaishnava Prat. So, then the celestial sages said, don't worry, we'll perform Ashwamed Yadiyya. So then he killed, he killed Vritrasu. After killing him, then uh, Indra went to the sages. Now Vashwamethi. So he said, sorry. We can't, uh, we can't do Vashwamethi again now. This is too sinful. So uh, they refused. They refused. <laughs> and then Indra had to go into the lotus stem in Mansarovar Lake and hide there for some hundred years without any food. 
He was suffering there. So then somebody may ask, Are these sages, what rascals they are? They said they'll perform yajna, and afterwards they said, No, we can't perform. So then what happened? The Acharya is explained. So then somebody may say, Oh, how these fellows went uh, scot free with their nonsense? No. Then when Indra was hiding in the lotus, there was uh, this King Nahusha who became Indra. And then it is said that this Nahusha, he troubled all these sages. <laughs> and then Nahusha troubled the sages. And then, but when Nahusha went to trouble the Saptarishis, then he got cursed to become a snake. <laughs> So you see, it's all so complicated. But one thing is sure, everything that's happening is just action, reaction, action, reaction, action. Just go. This is how material world functions. This is basically what is meant by karma. So it's really very difficult to figure out why things are happening in this world. But one thing we have to know, whatever Krishna, Krishna is in full control, and whatever he is doing is perfect. This one has to. I may understand it or not understand it. But we have to understand that whatever Krishna is doing is perfect. And everything is happening by his Achinti Shakti. And the whole thing is Achinti. Generally, what is say that if someone starts practicing bhakti, then Krishna takes control of his life. Right. But anyways, Krishna takes Krishna is in full control of everyone. Right. So then what difference does it make? Yes, but for the materialist, he is in indirect control. So the direct control is by Mayadi for the materialistic people. So it's working completely under his. Yes, but for the materialistic people, she is doing the job. See, actually, she doesn't have to do a big job. Everything has been set up, systems have been set up. This fellow does this wrong activity, this is the reaction. This wrong activity, this is the reaction. This body, this desire, this activity, this body. So the whole thing is, yes, it's set up. And then, uh, you know, she just have to have, just like Prabhupada gives the example, just like uh, there is uh, the law courts. Uh, so there is this criminal, this is the punishment. So you have even traffic laws. Uh, you violate this law, you break the signal, this much fine. You do this, this much fine, correct? All laws are there. And the policeman, he just has to see what is the law and according to that much fine. So my Devi's work also is like that. Everything has been set up and she just sees that things are happening. But in the case of devotees, then Krishna interferes. Then it is not just karma working. Krishna interferes. Then he can reduce the karma, he can increase it, he can keep it as it is. So then he manipulates. So in the case of devotees, that, that's why we know that famous example we said, the devotee's finger got cut while sabji cutting and Prabhupada said his head was supposed to be cut only finger got cut. So in the case of devotees, then Krishna interferes and then he manipulates according to what is best needed for the devotee. That is the difference. That law of karma is also Krishna's control and then transcending going Hence, that law of karma for devotee that is also control. Yes. Mm -hmm. In a recent uh, series of verses, uh, we heard that Krishna is focusing on that he is aloof. Mm -hmm. But like, like we are in material world and we get uh, uh, bounded, bounded mm -hmm. because we get attached to the material world. Correct. But with respect to Krishna, everything is spiritual. Correct. So why he needs to be detached? Because he can be detached at the same time he's aloof from the bondage of... Yes, of course, for Krishna, no laws apply. But at the same time, Krishna is explaining here for our understanding. For our understanding, Krishna is explaining that you think that I'm doing so much work, but I'm not bound. See, because these are the questions somebody could raise. That's why in between we were talking, the, we were giving those questions, right? The connections between the verses. 
Because these are the questions somebody can raise. Somebody can say, oh, Krishna is doing so much work. If he's doing work, then he, he, then he should be bound by the work. Somebody can raise that question. So therefore, then Krishna is explaining, no, I'm not bound because I'm detached. And so, yes, what you say is correct. Whether Krishna is detached, whether Krishna is attached, it makes no difference to me. It makes no difference. But yet, philosophically, he's explaining here. There's a philosophy. So then when you talk of philosophy, then everything has to follow you know, a certain philosophical theme and then everything has to be explained on the basis of philosophy. So therefore, he is going through all these details. Otherwise, what is the need for Krishna to explain all this in the first place? Who is there to question him? Why is he explaining all this? Who is there to question him? Even if somebody questions, he can say, get lost. I do what I like. He can say that. But why is he explaining all this? So that people like us can understand. Now, even for a fully surrendered devotee, it makes no difference to him. Even if he doesn't understand all this philosophy, it doesn't make a big difference. Just like we give that example, that story of the Brahman and the cobbler. So Narayana said, what Lord Narayan was doing? Threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. <clears throat> so the cobbler said, good, very nice. My Lord is great. So if somebody has that much of faith, then um, there is no need for all this explanation. Then take it. Bhagavan Jogi Khadi is perfect. Then there is no need for all this explanation. But then there are so many people in this world who are going to raise so many questions. In spite of Krishna explaining all this, people are not ready to accept him as God. In spite of all this explanation. So then for people who are not surrendered, people who have big brains, people who are philosophically minded, then for all that, then Krishna is going to go into all the details so that we philosophically understand the greatness of it. So this is for people like us who want to understand everything philosophically, logically. And for us, then people, Krishna is going through all this for our sake. Otherwise, Krishna could have said, I am the Supreme Lord. I'll do what I like. If you want, surrender. Finished. He could have said that. But why is he explaining all this? This for us to understand. Hmm. Uh, this uh, inconceivable whole topic, uh, there is verse one way by uh, means inconceivable, inse inconceivable becomes conceivable. So, means uh, at our time, we may not understand immediately, we may not realize all this inconceivable, but how we can make ourselves realize this inconceivable means uh, not by philosophy, but really realizing it. Uh, how, how does it happen? It is never good there. <laughs> so that means, that means you are saying, when will the time come when I will understand Krishna 100%? That is what you are trying to ask. But understanding Krishna 100% will never take place. Because Krishna, even Krishna cannot understand himself. In the second canto of the Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada explains why even Krishna cannot understand himself. Because as soon as Krishna tries to count his qualities, they have increased. <laughs> So, Shri Prabhupada writes, there is a constant competition between increment and measurement. 
there's a constant competition between increment and measure. Therefore, even Krishna cannot understand himself. Then somebody will say, oh, Krishna cannot understand himself. Then how is God? What will you say? <laughs> it is just like that question, you know, that famous question. Huh? Yeah. Yes, can he make a stone which he cannot? Something. So, yes, so, so if Krishna wants, he can come. If Krishna wants, he cannot come. There is no, there is no question of at every point of time, one has to accept the achintya shakti of the Supreme. What to speak of us? Narad Muni says, even great authorities like Brahma, Shiva, myself, the four Kumaras, we cannot understand. Brahma creates the material universe. He himself doesn't know how he has created. <laughs> so the whole explanation is there so that we understand that I am so insignificant. As jivas, we are so insignificant. Therefore, better is simply surrender. And whatever Krishna will reveal, be happy with that. The whole purpose of this, and that, that is why this Aishwarya Gyan is important. We already said that Aishwarya Gyan, Gyan acts as catalysts in one's devotion. So when one understands, oh, this is the supremacy of the Lord, this is beyond me. Ah. Therefore, Prabhupada writes in one purport, when one understands the greatness of the Lord, one has no other option but to surrender. So when one understands Krishna is so powerful and I am so insignificant, then what is the use of trying to show my greatness? So therefore, Brahmaji says after the Brahma Vimon Leela, then Brahmaji understood what is my power in front of Krishna's power. Then he said, I am like Jugnu in sunlight, bright sunlight like this. So where is Jugnu? So, but the foolish living entity who doesn't understand all this, then he thinks, I am so great. I can do so many wonderful things. This is only because of what? ignorance. So therefore, more the devotee gets realized knowledge, the more he becomes humble. That is why we find the greatest of the Vaishnavas are so humble. Because they have realized the greatness of Krishna. Then one realizes the greatness of Krishna, then one understands, oh, I am so insignificant. So therefore, the only reason for pride is what? Moha illusion. <clears throat> that is the only cause for it. So when one understands, oh, that's why we are studying all this. So when one studies all this, realizes all this by application, then automatically one will become. This should be the prayojan of studying all this. So after studying all this, still one thinks I'm great, I'm the big controller. That means he has never understood all this. Or one has understood it theoretically. That's all. But if one actually understands, one realizes what is the greatness of which I'm so insane. Then one surrenders. Then when one surrenders, then one accesses the grace of Krishna. And through that grace of Krishna, then the insignificant living entity can do wonderful things. Because it accesses a power 
much beyond his own. Okay. Okay, one last question. Thank you, sir. So many questions were answered, but still one is remaining. Uh, two parts we have Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. So Vishnu is maintaining that seems he is involved. And secondly, we Okay, I'll I'll give you the answer for that. Uh, refer to first canto. Second chapter, verse number 30. 30. Mm. Okay. Come back mm. to the mm. Second question is, one way it is said that from <clears throat> Mahavishnu breath, the exam universe is team. Mm. Another way of the story that Mahavishnu class with the Mahatatva, so how it is happening. And second question is if Brahma Vishnu is they are the maintainer, but what is Kari? No, Brahma Vishnu Vishnu is maintainer. No, they are catering what is what is nature is doing? What is Kali Durga? Kali is, I guess, the main door. So what is she doing when Brahma is creating, Vishnu is maintaining, and Shiva is maintaining? What's her job in this all things? Okay, you want to understand the whole thing perfectly, you can do Chaitanya Chaitanya. But anyway, to tell in brief. So uh, so Mahavishnu glances, but even Mahavishnu's glance is not direct. So Mahavishnu, when he wants to contact material nature, then Mahavishnu's expansion is Lord Shiva. So that's why Lord Shiva is simultaneously different and non-different from Vishnu. So the classical example of the milk and yogurt. So when Vishnu wants to come in touch with Prakriti, then he transforms himself. He doesn't directly come in touch. So that's how Lord Shiva is there. And then Lord Shiva impregnates basically Prakriti. That is material nature. So that's what happens there. So that is where Durga is involved. So basically, she is the controller of Prakriti and then Lord Shiva is impregnating Prakriti with all the living entities. Okay. Okay, now what was the other question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what happens? So when, when Mahavishnu exists, all the universes come out from his pores. And when Mahavishnu inhales, then all the universes go back into his pores. <laughs> How this is related? What did what happen? It is independent. Areva. See, when when he exhales, universes come out. When he inhales, the universes go inside. When the glass <laughs> so, so the universes come out, and then the universes are so the universes are like beaches. And then so everything is happening parallelly. Everything is happening parallelly. So you just see in one one breath. How much is one breath? Right? So it's not so. You know, it's described in pages after pages and verses after verses in the Bhagavatam. But as far as Supreme Lord is concerned, it's all happening so quickly, simultaneously. So, so Mahavishnu is glancing also and the universes are coming out. By his glance, all the material elements are created. Then the universes are coated with the material elements. Then within that, um, Garudaksha Vishnu enters and Brahmaji is born. Then Brahmaji, he he gives all the living entities, the bodies, and everything is happening. Simultaneously, everything is happening. Hata, fat. What is the job of Ali? <laughs> so that's what the <laughs> So Durga is the. Yes, so she is controlling material nature. She is the personification of material nature. The external energy of the Lord. Personification of external energy is material nature. So material nature is what is provide what is uh, providing all the material ingredients. So she provides all the material ingredients for all the bodies of the living entities, for the coverings of the universe. So she's providing all the material elements. And then at the same time, she is the controller of Prakriti. So then if somebody tries to enjoy Prakriti, then she uh, then she takes a trishu.
She doesn't give intelligence to Brahma. Ingredients. Ingredients she gives. So they are all part of the game. See, they are all they are all assisting the Supreme Lord in his pastimes. There is no superior intelligence. Of course, she is she is Shakti Tattva, Brahma Ji is Jiva Tattva. Okay. So ultimately, they are all assisting the Lord in his pastimes. That's all. Uh, you will find it in Sanatan Shiksha also. And uh, you will also find, uh, find it in the glories of uh, Lord Nityananda. So there also you will find uh, elaborate description about creation. <laughs> okay, fine. So tomorrow we will continue our discussion on the venture. Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada, Shri Okay, so tomorrow class time is 7 to 12.30 and 3 to 4. Okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare Krishna. Thank you.